Hello everyone, this is Amritpal Singh. Welcome to the next video of Scala. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about array collection. In the previous two videos, we just have started with the topic uh, collections in Scala. In the very first video, I've just given you the introduction to the Scala. Then next video, we talked about the uh, for each method. Now we're gonna talk about the first collection that we got, it's called array collection. Let's explore this. So arrays in Scala are the collections which comes under the sequence class. I've already have talked about the sequence class in uh, in the uh, first video uh, of this collection. I'll put up a link in description if you haven't watched that. So it comes under the sequence class. So they are the mutable collections, uh, meaning is it means the things can be changed. It means when elements in array are modified, the original array is updated as well. Again, uh, mutable and immutable thing I've already explained in the introductory video. So uh, make sure you watch that if you haven't watched the same so far. So how we can create and populating an array, right? So the it is very straightforward, very simple. So what we have to do, we just have to use keyword array followed by the round parenthesis, this one, the round brackets, in which uh, we need to mention the elements we want our array to be start with. So this is a simple syntax uh, in which we have an array in which we have to specify all the elements in the with the comma separated in this round brackets or parenthesis. So next is uh, new. Uh, what if, if we don't uh, initially know what we want to populate our array with? Because in this syntax, we are pretty much sure that uh, how we want to initialize our array, right? We can specify one comma, two comma, three comma, four. But what if, if we are not aware about in the beginning that uh, what are the, my initial elements? So then we can make use of this new. So uh, I'll talk about all the, these things in a while after I complete this presentation, I'll be coming, uh, going to the Scala's uh, terminal and then I'll be showing you all the things in practical. Now, how we can populate the array? There are multiple methods uh, we can populate the array with. So for first, first method is a range in which you can specify here the range in which we can specify two arguments. In this case, zero comma five. Zero means start and five means number of elements. So it means it will be array which lasts from zero, one, two, three, four, right? This is called range. Second method that we got uh, with which we can populate the uh, array with, it's called fill in which we are just filling the UBD here, right? So we can use fill method in which we can specify the uh, uh, number of elements, which is two. It means UBD will be printed twice here and I'm specifying the, in this case, uh, the value, right? Which is UBD. So the third one is using two array. So in this case, we are writing here, hello dot two array. It will convert the arguments to an array. So because we are using for each print term here, so it will be printed in a H in the first line, E in second line, L third line, L fourth line and O last line. So this is uh, how we can make use of two array. So how we can access the elements of an array? Let's suppose array has already been created. So how we can access, uh, access the elements of array? So we simply have to pass the index over there, array name, and then pass the index in the round brackets. Like in this case, you can see, uh, we are now making use of the length of an array. So uh, I'll be showing you all the things in a while uh, in the in a form of some practical, uh, like some demo in the Scala's terminal. So here we are talking about the, how we can find the length of an array. We are having a length method available. It will just print the answer five because we have a array of five elements. So, okay. So this is all about the, um, uh, like introduction to the array. Now let's go to the Scala's terminal. I'm opening up here and I've already have written down all the examples that we are, I, I'm going to use for all these things. First is how we can initialize the array. Okay. How we can start with the array creation. So I'll be just using this one in which I'm just uh, copy and pasting the line. Now in this case, I'm gonna uh, create the array here. So you can see I'm just creating an array of first 10 elements, one, two, three, till 10. So how we can print the uh, results, right? I've already have discussed this for each method in a previous video. I'll be uh, sharing that link also in case you haven't watched it uh, so far. So here I'll be printing the things in a new line, right? Using for each. So uh, all the elements will be traversed with the help of for each because I'm using a method for print element, so everything will be printed in a new line. So this is how we can start with the array creation. So guys, uh, next point is, uh, the, uh, the the good thing about Scala array is that, like it can use all the operations of a sequence class. So here I'll be using all the sequence methods. So now here, uh, like, like I'm creating this array, in which uh, now I'm just applying the filter method to filter out the even elements, then I'm just multiplying it, and then I'm reversing it. Let's see this in action. So first of all, I'm just taking into consideration the first thing in which I'm creating the uh, array here, right, which is called integer array of first 10 elements. 
afterwards i'm just filtering i'm just applying the filter method to it in which uh, i'm just uh, getting the even numbers right let's do it wait let me copy it again and paste it here yes you can see now i'm getting answer 2 4 6 8 10 right as expected then i'm applying the third method called math method in which i'm multiplying with the 2 so answer will be uh, 4 you see 4 8 12 16 20 and last i'm just use, applying the reverse method so the things why i'm showing this to you uh, to you here in this case like like i just wanted to show you that uh, all the operations of sequence class are applicable to array as well so that's why i'm just applying or using all the methods with the likes of filter map and reverse so now let's apply the reverse here so you can see i got the answer 2016 12 8 4 and if i want to print it in a new line so we can just use this for each print ln like we did in the first example and i'm getting the answer in a new line so 2016 12 8 4 right now we have also talked about the new in a presentation let's make you make use of it let's suppose if you're not sure that how to initialize the array with so what you can do specify the array as a keyword then specify data type and specify the uh, size here so it means i'm expecting that my i'm just expecting that my i'll, I'll be having an array uh, of a type string uh, which, which have a three size so because i haven't specified the thing so everything is got initialized with the null so let's populate this with the help of index so i'm just doing it in a one shot here so i'm populating with the red blue and yellow so my indexes are 0 1 2 right now it, it got filled let's now see the result now with the print ln method let's see so i got the answer red blue yellow so this is how we can make use of new now let's move further how to populate the array right i've already have told you that there are three uh, multiple methods available let's apply the range here so very simple one let's see here i'm just uh, creating an array array one in which i'm specifying the range uh, first is starting element second is the size so 0 1 2 3 4 5 it's an array of uh, size 5 right 0 1 2 3 4 this is called range next is fill so let's suppose i want to fill uh, populate my array here i'm using fill in which i'm specifying ubd as the value and because i'm specifying this uh, size as two number of elements as two that's why the ubd got printed twice so in this case array is got populated with ubd twice next is two array so it will be converting the arguments to an array here i'm using two array method let's see it here so you can see hello h e l l o so you can see uh, this uh, this one uh, in this case the uh, arguments has been converted to an array so how we can access the elements with the help of index so let's suppose if we have an array of uh, size 5 now how we can get the particular thing with the index so i'm using 3 here right 0 1 2 3 so i got answer 6 right at last how we can print the length of the array so let's do it i'm applying the length method here and I got answer 5 although you can print the answer as well like this print ln len and it will be showing the answer as 5 as expected right so this uh, marks the end of this video I hope you must have understood what is array how we can uh, create the array how we can populate the array right so see you next video guys thank you